we have two huge, massive, breaking news stories on the deep state. One, how incontrovertible exculpatory evidence was purposely withheld from the FISA court. The evidence is in. That blockbuster news and Peter Strzok's hidden testimony released tonight. We've got all the details. We begin with other news. The system was rigged. Now, countless students who applied to Georgetown, USC, uh, Stanford, Yale, all these other top universities were likely cheated out of their spot because in this case it is a zero-sum game, all because dozens, perhaps now as many as 800, I'm reading, wealthy families selfishly made massive payments to this man right here named Rick Singer in order to fix an SAT score, bribe official college uh, boards people, and steal spots reserved for student athletes. They never played the sport. They even went as far as to Photoshop the pictures of the faces of these kids and put them on the bodies of the real athletes. That's how far this went. Now, a $5 million class action lawsuit has been filed against eight of these universities on the basis that certain students were cheated out of a spot because of the university's failure to prevent the scam. Others are claiming, well, damages, asserting that their Stanford University degrees have been irreparably damaged and devalued. Either way, this is not a good look for some of America's, quote, prestigious universities, which allowed massive corruption to fester at some of the highest levels. Now, one of the most notable people charged in this ongoing scandal was Full House actress Laurie Laughlin, as you can see there, paying $500,000 in bribes to fraudulently secure spots at USC for her two daughters. And when Laughlin was arrested, well, one of her daughters apparently was spending our spring break on board a yacht owned by USC's Board of Trustees Chairman Rich Caruso. The system, in this case, appears to be rigged. We give every person the presumption of innocence. But think about the people that work hard, the students that study, that get the A's, play by the rules, earn them. Uh, then you have a bunch of people only care about status and bragging rights, and those spots are taken. We'll have more on this later tonight. But first, we have other breaking news out of Chicago. Before we get to our top story, Justin, uh, Jesse Smollett was back in court today. He pled not guilty to those 16 felony charges stemming from an elaborate hate crime hoax scheme and found guilty. Smollett could face up to 48 years in prison, forced to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines. Now, this comes as we're now learning that a former top aide to former First Lady Michelle Obama urged the Chicago Police Department to turn over the case to the FBI. And, of course, that never happened. And now all eyes are directly on Smollett, who was allegedly defrauding the city of Chicago from the very beginning, all while dragging Trump supporters through the mud. Now, before we get to our top story, I want to focus on Hannity Watch, the radical 2020 Democratic candidates. Yet another Democrat has jumped into the race, this case being former Congressman Robert Francis Bozo O'Rourke. Well, that's what I call him. He's flailing his way into the race this week, literally, telling Vanity Fair that he was born to run for president. How regal. Needless to say, Bozo got off to a hot start in Iowa. Take a look. I don't think there's ever been a greater moment in our lifetimes and for this country. That the challenges have never been greater, or more severe, or more critical, or more defining for the future. On the more humorous side, Speaker Pelosi was actually asked today to name Bozo's greatest accomplishments during his time there in the House. Well, let's say it was a struggle for the Speaker. Let's take a look. What, in your view, was Beto O'Rourke's signature accomplishment as a member of the House? <laughs> Beto was, was brought a great deal of vitality to, uh, to Congress. One of the issues in his, as, as I haven't been asked this question, but I just know of his record here, uh, when he came, he came as a real champion for uh, the, the environment. Uh, he got a great deal of support from the environmental community in his district. Also, he was a member of the Armed Services Committee. Uh, 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 strong member of the Armed Services Committee. Now, too bad all that vitality didn't help Bozo achieve anything during his time in Washington. But get ready. If Bozo is elected, he plans to flush the Constitution down the toilet like so many other 2020 radical extreme Democratic socialists. And he wants to pack the Supreme Court. In other words, they want to increase the number of court justices, illegally reshape the court. 
We're going to have more in a mini monologue featuring everything you know, need to know about Robert Francis O'Rourke that the left-wing destroy, hate Trump media mob will never tell you, including the time he almost killed somebody during a DUI hit-and-run incident. And we'll show you what President Trump has to say about, well, Bozo's decision to run. Now, without a doubt, Democrats are willing to do anything and everything to be President Trump, even apparently giving young kids 16 the right to vote. Take a look. I myself have always been for lowering the, voter, the voting age to 16. I think it's really important to capture kids when they're in high school, when they're interested in all of this, when they're learning about government to be able to vote. Maybe we should make it the legal drinking age. All right, well, more on this radical way. So the Democrats are trying to reshape America. Very dangerous times. First, let's get to our top story. Major, huge breaking news. We begin our Hannity watch tonight on the deep state. Trump, Russia collusion is, has always been, and remains a myth. And the highest ranking member of the FBI knew it. Breaking just moments ago, according to The Hills, John Solomon, who will join us in a minute, there is now evidence that the Trump campaign associates, George Papadopoulos and Carter Page, both made exculpatory statements at the very beginning, the very start of the FBI's Russia probe back in 2016. Now, according to Solomon, both men made comments to the FBI informant, Stefan Halper, making it clear they were never involved. They had no knowledge of any collusion whatsoever. Zero. Nothing. The FBI pressed forward anyway, possibly hiding that exculpatory evidence from the all-important FISA court where we know a fraud was committed. In fact, Halper's account was never presented to the court. That's FISA abuse. That's fraud before a FISA court. That's prosecutorial misconduct. That is an effort by a few high-ranking bureaucrats to undermine Donald Trump and his allies and, frankly, help steal an election. It's the biggest abuse of power corruption scandal in modern history, and it is now the House of Cards is beginning to fall. Tonight, we have other major breaking news. Last week, it was Bruce Orr. Last night, it was Lisa Page. Now we have the full transcript from Peter Strzok's testimony on the Hill. Again, courtesy Georgia Congressman Collins. Thank you. This is a huge development. For context, let's remember, Peter Strzok, virulently anti-Trump, pro-Hillary Clinton, FBI investigator. He's involved in every single role here, every integral role in both the FBI's Clinton investigation, wait a minute, matter, and the subsequent probe into the Trump campaign. And Strzok helped author Hillary's exoneration letter. And he was among the agents who later interviewed Hillary. He says he knew he was in the room when they took out the words from the DOJ, oh, gross negligence, the legal standard, oh, reckless uh, disregard. And remember, they added the new stature of intent. Lisa Page told us last night, this went right into Loretta Lynch's office. All of it. What did she know? When did she know it? What did she tell Obama? What did he know? When did he know it? And at the same time, he was texting his FBI girlfriend, Lisa Page, that Hillary would win and should win $100 million to zero. Trump supporters were smelly Walmart people, that Trump was deplorable, even vowed to stop Trump, and so much more. We are talking about hundreds of graphic anti-Trump, pro-Hillary texts. And now, according to Strzok's sworn testimony, we now know that Obama's DOJ, led by Loretta Lynch, corroborating the testimony of Lisa Page, entered into an agreement with the FBI, actually restricting the FBI access to Hillary Clinton's emails during their so-called investigation, including emails related to the Clinton Foundation. And according to Strzok, I'll quote him, my recollection is that access to those emails were based on consent that was negotiated between the Department of Justice attorneys and the counsels for Clinton. Puts a lot of light on that tarmac meeting with Bill and Loretta Lynch, doesn't it? And Strzok even commented that there was an, even an extensive filter team in place to work through the various consent agreements with Team Clinton. In other words, let me break it down. The FBI's investigation was controlled from the very top of Obama's Department of Justice. Let me say it again. The top. In other words... This was never a real investigation. The people involved in it are now telling us. In other words, it's now gone from, oh, 
Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, Comey, McCabe, and, and others, to, oh, Loretta Lynch herself, to the head of the DOJ. The outcome they made sure was never in doubt. Now, I wonder if Roger Stone got a consent agreement when the FBI raided his house pre-dawn raid with, you know, Navy frogs and amphibious vehicles and 16 vehicles and 27 men armed, you know, in the dark of night, pre-dawn raid with CNN cameras. Meanwhile, Strzok also confirmed that the language in Clinton's exoneration letter was in fact changed, as I said, from gross negligence, which is the legal definition in the law. They changed it to extreme carelessness at the behest, again, of the DOJ and their attorneys who are working for Loretta Lynch on behalf, clearly, of Hillary Clinton. Strzok testified, my recollection is attorneys brought it up and that these, of course, were DOJ attorneys. This is yet more damning evidence that Obama's DOJ literally rigged the investigation from the beginning so that Hillary Clinton could continue as a presidential candidate when even the number one general counsel of the FBI argued she should be charged with the felony of the Espionage Act. They guaranteed that she can continue without facing any criminal charges. Or as Lindsey Graham put it earlier today on the Senate floor, anyone else? You, me, everybody else. We don't have dual justice under the law in this country anymore. We'd be in jail. Take a look. How do you interview Clinton the way she was interviewed? Any American out there who did what Secretary Clinton did, you'd be in jail now. We let Mueller look at all things Trump related to collusion and otherwise. Somebody needs to look at what happened on the other side and find out if the FBI and the DOJ had two systems, one supporting the person they wanted to win and one out to get the person they wanted to lose. Some of these people have been fired for lying, and it's now time to have a special counsel look in all things 2016, not just Trump. Well said, Senator Graham. Good for you. If America has an equal justice under the law system, equal application under our laws, a special counsel into the Clinton's crimes that were rigged will be appointed by the new attorney general immediately. And of course, while the FBI gave Hillary a free pass, Mueller's special counsel investigation into the Trump campaign, that was tainted. We now know from the get-go, from day one, from the beginning. Remember when Strzok texted that his work on the Russia collusion investigation, remember it was an insurance policy? Well, he couldn't really explain any of that away. The excuses were beyond weak and pathetic. Obviously, he had incentive to take down Trump at all costs. Remember, Hillary should win $100 million to zero. When Robert Mueller appointed him as a lead investigator in a special counsel probe, was he ever asked about his obvious political bias? No. According to Strzok's testimony, never. Mueller didn't care, didn't inquire about the known political bias, an investigation into a political campaign. That's probably why I've been warning everybody about Mueller. And he hired, of course, Hillary Clinton's former Clinton Foundation attorney, Jeannie Ray, or the fact that Andrew Weissman actually attended Hillary Clinton's election night party. It never happened. But breaking tonight... In a sign that we are nearing the end of the witch hunt, Andrew Weissman is now stepping away from Team Mueller. Maybe time to investigate him. I guess he's not happy that the witch hunt is going to come up short of their goal.